Man, oh man, has this book been flying by. Season of the Sandstorm. Right now, we are on to chapter nine. So if you open up your reader response journal, that would be phenomenal. Okay, so I want you to illustrate the characters and maybe even how the characters have changed. We'll talk about at the end. So I want you to just keep a focus on the characters. Listen to the description of the characters and write down um, and illustrate how they're feeling, what they're wearing, what's going on with them. So let's begin chapter nine, House of Wisdom. And you are illustrating the characters. Here we go. Mamoon, said Annie. Yes, said Mamoon. I am very glad to see that you have safely arrived in Baghdad. We're glad you're safe too, said Annie. We were worried about you. I looked everywhere for you after the sandstorm, said Mamoon. Finally, I gave up. I gave up my search and returned sadly to Baghdad. I assume you found your family. Uh, sure, said Annie. We found them. And we found your book, said Jack. When we couldn't find you, we decided that we should give the book to the caliph. Mamoon smiled. You still do not understand, do you? He said. Understand what? Said Annie. I am caliph Abdullah Allah Moon. You're the caliph, said Andy. Annie? But how, what? How, what? Stammered Jack. For many years, I have wanted a book of Aristotle's wisdom, explained the caliph. I heard that such a book had been found in the city of Damascus, and I made arrangements to acquire it for my library. It was most important that it arrived here safely. I have long wished to travel again through the desert, as I did when I was a boy. So I disguised myself as a humble merchant and made the journey. My fellow travelers never knew my true identity. Wow, whispered Jack. You have shown me that you have great respect for books and learning, said Khalif, Alamamun. And you have also proven you have humble hearts. Before you join your family, I want to show you a very special place. I call it the House of Wisdom. The House of Wisdom, breathed Jack. That sounds great. It's my hope that the world will indeed find it's great, said the caliph. Come. He started to leave the room. Jack and Annie rose from the floor and hurried after him. Carrying the ancient book of Aristotle, the caliph led Jack and Annie out of the room of the tree. His gold-trimmed robe billowed about him as he swept down the corridor. Every person he passed bowed low to the floor. Another mystery solved, Annie said to Jack. She quoted from Merlin's letter. Greet a friend you once knew and a new friend to be. Both friends are the same person, said Annie. Mamoon from the desert and Caliph Abdullah ala Mamoon. Right, said Jack, smiling. The Caliph led Jack and Annie out the front doors of the palace. In the courtyard stood, stood two camels with long poles attached to their saddles. Resting on top of the poles was a small carriage, decorated with gold tassels and brass bells. Servants helped Jack and Annie and the Caliph Abdullah ala Mamoon into the strange little carriage. Bells jingled as the camels began to move slowly through the courtyard. The caliph opened tiny shutters to let in air and sunlight. Jack looked out. Everyone bowed as the royal carriage passed. The boys playing ball, the gardeners weeding flower beds, the women carrying pots. Jack had lots of questions about the House of Wisdom. But now that he knew their friend, Mamoon, was the mighty caliph, he felt shy. Even Annie seemed to be at a loss of words as they rode past the date palms and palace gardens. We are here, said the caliph as the camels came to a stop. He helped Jack and Annie out of the carriage. Then he led them up the steps of a large brick building. Welcome to the House of Wisdom, said the caliph, a learning center for the entire world. What happens here, asked Jack. Come, I will show you. The caliph escorted Jack and Annie through the front door and down a wide hallway. We have a laboratory for discovering new medicines, he said, and an observatory for viewing the stars and planets. But this, this is my favorite room of all. 
The caliph stood before an arched doorway. He opened the door and led Jack and Annie into a huge silent room. This is the library, he said in a hushed voice. Even I must be very quiet here. Late afternoon light slanted down from high, open windows streaming over bookshelves and colorful carpets. Men read at long tables. When the readers looked up and saw the caliph, they all started to rise. Please continue to do your work. Do not mind us, the caliph said softly. The men sat down again and returned to their reading and writing. The caliph pointed to a... Oh, sorry looked into a bearded man sitting by a window, hunched over a pile of papers. The man was writing furiously. That is al Khwarizmi," <laughs> whispered the caliph. I, I, his name is hard to say. Check a look at his name. Do you guys see it? Khwarizmi. Khwarizmi? Maybe. He is truly a great mathematician. He has perfected the Indian way of writing numbers. The caliph pointed to the numbers written on the board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We call these Arabic numerals, he said. Arabic numerals, said Jack. Yes, said the caliph. Jack whispered to Annie. We use Arabic numerals, too. They must have come from that guy. The caliph pointed to another man reading by the window. He is Al-Kindi. He is perhaps the most brilliant scientist and thinker in the world, whispered the caliph, but he is very humble. He believes knowledge cannot belong to only one person or country. It belongs to all. The world grows wise only when wisdom is shared. I agree, and that is why I built this house. I agree, too, whispered Annie. Me, too, said Jack. Scientists and scholars from many countries come here to read and study and share their knowledge, whispered the caliph. We have thousands of books. They have all been copied by hand. Look at that awesome library, you guys. How cool is that? Books of history, mathematics, geography, and medicine, said the caliph. But we also have a very special book of fantasy and wonder. The caliph took a large, thick book down from the shelf. He rested it on a table and turned the pages to show Jack and Annie. The book was filled with fancy writing and beautiful illustrations. There were pictures of Aladdin and Alibaba, magic lamps and flying carpets. Oh, the tales from the Arabian Nights, said Annie. We know these stories. You do? Wonderful, the caliph said with a smile. It seems some... Someone from our lands has traveled to yours and shared our stories. Perhaps someone will soon bring stories from your land back to us. That is the great power of a book, no? Yes, said Annie, and I hope your land will hear of this book too some day, said the caliph. He held up a book of Aristotle's writing. After I have read it, I will have it copied so I can share its wisdom with the world. Thank you for helping me. Sure, said Jack modestly. That was our mission. I fear I must now return to my duties, said the caliph. But please stay in the library. Read until you must go and meet your family and come back some day to visit me. We'll try, said Jack. Goodbye, Annie. Goodbye, Jack. Bye, Mamoon, Annie said. The mighty caliph gave them a warm smile and a deep bow. He left Jack and Annie in the wondrous library. Oh, my goodness. How great was that? So now we see Mamoon, and he's a very different guy, isn't he? He's got some fancy clothes on. He's Everyone bows to him. When we first met Mamoon, that didn't happen, did it? Nope. He was just like any ordinary guy. But little did Jack and Annie know, they had already met the Caliph. Go figure. I bet you Mamoon was chuckling the whole time. <laughs> All right, so I want you to make a prediction. How will Jack and Annie get back to the treehouse? Join me tomorrow for chapter 10, Before the Moon Rises.